to graph y equals 3 to the x minus 1 plus 2, one of the methods I can apply is by using a table. So if I'm going to use a table, I'm going to create, obviously, an x and y axis, because I'm graphing an exponential equation in this, for, in this uh, example. So I'm going to graph an x and y axis. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table of values. Now, the nice thing about creating a table of values is you get to create your table of values, right? We have an x and a y coordinate. But ladies and gentlemen, we talked about the domain of a logarithmic is all real numbers. That means you can pick any number you want to for x. Negative 100, positive 15, negative 2 thirds, positive 1 million. Right? You can pick any number you want to because the domain is all real numbers. However, um, we probably want to just keep it simple, right? You guys agree with me? Keep it simple? All right. So usually when keeping it simple, Unless I'm dealing with a fraction, I just like to usually just use a base of negative, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. That way, I got some negatives, I got some positives, and we got the best number in the world, 0, as well. Because that's always nice to calculate with 0. So now, remember, if I have an equation, if I have the x value, I just plug in the x value to find the y value. Then I have an x and a y coordinate or x and y value, so therefore I have a coordinate point, which I can plot. So negative 2. So I have y equals 3 times negative 2 minus 1 plus 2. Well, negative 2 minus 1 is going to be negative 3. So I have 3 raised to the negative third plus 2. Whoa. That's going to be a decimal. So now remember, 3 to the negative third, remember that's a negative. So that's the same thing as 1 over 3 cubed plus 2, which is 1 over 27 plus 2, right? Then make those the same fractions. That's going to be 54. So 54 over 27 is what? What is the decimal? So you could say 55 over 27, or obviously if you're going to be graphing, it's like 2.37, they said, approximately. 2.037? OK, so it's almost at 2 then. All right, so now let's do negative 1. So yeah, I just plug in 3 times negative 1, negative 1 minus 1, plus 2. Yes? Yes? So then do a fraction, why don't you just pause the number? Huh? You can just use positive one. numbers and not do all the fractions, right? You could, but then you're not going to know what any of the behavior is on the negative side, right? So. Um, I was kind of more talking about fractions when I have a fraction as my a. But again, still, yeah, you're not really going to be able to get, you could probably, we could probably pick different numbers that might be a little bit easier with this. But it's OK. For, you can use decimals for this graphing. This is just a basic you know, kind of thing with this. Um, so therefore, I have 3 over negative 1 minus 1, which is uh, three, 3 to the negative second power, right? which is 1 ninth. 1 ninth plus, 1 ninth plus 2 is going to be uh, 19 over 9. Yes? 19 divided by 9 is? Anybody? OK. And then let's do 0. Ah, decimals. So I have 3 raised to 0, uh, 3 to 0 minus 1, which is 3 to the negative first power. So 3 to the negative first power is 1 third. 1 third plus 2 is going to be 4 thirds, which is? 2.333. All right. Now let's get to the easier answers. That's 4 thirds. So y equals 3 to the 1 minus 1 plus 2. Well, 1 minus 1 is 0. 3 to the 0 power is 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. And then I have 2. Uh, y equals 3 to the um, 2 minus 1 plus 2. 
2 minus 1 is 1. 3 to the first power is 3. Plus 2 is 5. All right. So again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to be estimating with this table. There's other ways we can go through this. But I just want you guys to understand you can always plug in your values. All right. So let's go at negative 2. And negative 2, we said it was around. Uh, we said it's around 2, just over 2. So at negative 2, we're just over 2. At negative 1, we're a little bit higher. At um, 0, we're at 2.33. At 1, we're all the way up to 3. And at 2, we're now at 5. All right, so you guys can see now that's what our graph has looked like. All right. Um, a couple things, let's go and talk about the domain and range. Um, when you guys are looking at the domain and range of this, my graph, you guys can see that my graph transferred. There is a sh vertical shift of what? Does anybody know what the vertical shift was? How much did I move it up? Up two, right? Now remember, my parent graph has an asymptote at zero. So if I have an asymptote at zero, but my whole graph has been shifted up, what's my new asymptote? At two. And that's what I want you guys to understand is that that's a transformation is a lot of times it's easier because now you can look at this and say, this graph is never going to get below 2. So you can say y equals 2 is the asymptote. The domain is all real numbers. And the range is going to be from 2 to infinity. OK? So that's the long way. If you forget how to graph, you can always use a table of values. Please don't ever forget it. All right? Now.